Hey, what's going on guys? Joe with OMGRC here. So today I have in my hand is, these are brand new shocks. They do need to be built. And they're for the TRMT8E, the BE6S. That's the Team Red Cat 1.8 scale truck. And I can give you kind of a, so you guys kind of know what I'm talking about. I always put a link in the description too. But I'll just grab the body here real quick because if you see my other videos, you know exactly what RC I'm talking about right now. I haven't used it yet. I did a quick run on it and had some issues with it. So one issue being the shocks are all leaking and they're not holding any shock oil. So even actually one of my other uh, subscribers noticed that, hey, the front looked like it needed some oil in it. Good catch because it did. And I didn't say that in the video because I just want to kind of focus on the actual truck in general doing the unboxing. But anyway, I cleaned it all up. So now we're going to go ahead and put new shocks in. I have for the front and the rear. So they sent me two of these bags of shocks. So four shocks all together. If you notice in the background here, I've already done a couple of them and it takes a little, it takes time because the, the thicker the oil and you have bubbles that are in there when you first start um, going through the rebuild of it and pushing the shock shaft up and down a little bit, you're going to get air pockets. Therefore, you're going to get bubbles and it takes a while because the oil is thick. It's using something like around an 80 weight is what I stuck in here. It may, I might change that later down the road, but that's what it is. The bottle says 50, but I'm going to say it's about 80 or something like that because I've added a little bit thicker oil to it in the mix. So anyhow, let's go ahead and get started with putting our shocks together. All right, so I laid everything out here, kind of starting how you'd want to put it all together, assemble it. Moving forward here, uh, let's start with, well, we got to go with the shaft here. And also let's take... We'll take those out. I'll do one of them because there's no sense of repeating the same thing twice, but I figure I'll let, at least let you guys know how to assemble it. And like I said, I'll put a little picture in there too, straight from Red Cat's website on how it's the exploded view of basically kind of like this anyhow. So things that you want to do first, just going to take this apart here. So we can get to this piece here, we can get the shaft in there, what have you. And then the shock cap. So right now, what you'll do, is take that shaft. Here, there is a difference between the top and the bottom too. You'll notice like this, the top piece here, the threading's thinner and it has like a little space there as well. Right, so the first thing you wanna do is there's only one of these silver little washers that are in the kit. Well, there's two of them, but one for each shock. So this is a silver washer, so you'd wanna go ahead, this goes for the top. So that'll fit snug on there. It won't be any kind of gap or anything like that. So anyway, go ahead and do that. Then we're gonna, next thing we're gonna do is you'll notice that there's a flat spot on one side as shown right here and the other side has an indentation. So the indentation goes so that way it fits right on that shock. And then we'll go ahead and put that nut right on there. And you don't have to get that too tight right now and I'll kind of go over that. As we assemble everything, we'll tighten everything up. But as long as it's on there enough that's not gonna back off or anything like that, you're good. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead, take one of our shock cylinders here, go ahead and put that through. Now what we want to do is we're going to go to the, the bottom of it. So, and grabbing, you need one of the little O-rings that are here, the rubber ones. Go ahead and slide that on. Then take your, your spacer, it's a plastic spacer. Can't really, anyway, it's a plastic spacer that comes in the kit too. That's the next one you'll slide on. And then last, as far as putting those little spacers on, you'll have your other O-ring that you'll slide on. And all this stuff will go squish kind of right down into that little spot that's there, that space. All right, now that we have that done, then you can go ahead and slide this over. And then you can tighten that up. So all I did was just drop that down. And that's gonna compress those little pieces that are in there. Now, you, you may, and I don't know as far as longevity, how well that's going to, you know, hold 
you might have to put something in there to kind of like, I'm not going to say if you do the thread locker, but maybe the blue, which is not like the lock tight, it's more like it just to kind of hold it in place. You can probably, you can maybe do that. Uh, I don't know how hard it's going to be to get that undone. And if you saw one of my other videos, it's very difficult to get this because there's nothing, there's no groove in there to get a, any kind of wrench in there. So I just do it hand tight for now. If it does come loose, you know, maybe you guys, that, oh, it comes loose or past experience. Like, oh yeah, I put a little bit of something in there to hold it down. Anyway, that's what I'm doing for now. Now this can go however you want to. We can go ahead and put this little rubber, I'll call it like a baffle. I don't know the exact name of it. But anyway, there is kind of like, this is the concave side of it and you have the convex side of it. So the convex side, here's the sh shock cap. Here's the convex side of it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in that way, that orientation. All right. So you don't really have to press it down in there too much. It pretty much just goes in there pretty good. All right, so that's that. So I'll leave that aside. Okay, so the next thing you can do is, this is just the bottom piece that holds that for the shock shaft. Screw that little, anyway, it's this piece here. So you get that, you can go ahead and mount that up. What, I, what I'm doing anyhow is I just go ahead and I'll raise this up a little bit because we need to tighten that screw down or that nut down along with installing this piece as well. So I'll go ahead and kind of like two in one, getting them both tight. So it's kind of, I'll go ahead. So anyway, you'll want to get this tight and then we'll continue from there. All right, so I got that all done on that part of it so that's secure and also so is that little nut that's in there all right so next thing i'm going to go ahead and do so i got to get everything together here um in this case here this kit for whatever reason someone goofed up and this little insert like the spacer this spacer maybe in your kit it won't be incorrect i'll have to let note right in I'll have to re I will have to notify Red Cat that this is not correct that's in the kit. This is what goes down at the bottom and it's supposed to pivot that little pivot ball. But unfortunately, it's not the right size. So, as you can see, it just goes right through. So it's incorrect. So the, this kit unfortunately didn't come with the right one the it came with the wrong one. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the old little pivot balls, what you call it. I'll have to pop it out and transfer that over. I could have taken this one off, put it on there, but I'll just pop it out and put it on there. So hopefully you don't have that problem with your kit. All right, so everything's together on that part of it. So we're good. Now it's just pretty much at this point in time, it's gonna go ahead and fill it up with oil. What I would recommend if you're filling up with oil, you're gonna need to basically kind of move that shaft up and down slowly once you start to fill the oil, when you put the oil in. And I would have filled it up maybe, you know, almost to the very top, maybe leaving a little bit of a gap there. I'll show you right now. So as I do this. And your weight, you know, that's gonna vary depending on your liking of this. Like I said, this is something like around 80 weight, something like that. It says 50 on it, but it's actually something like around 80. It's just, I got it a little bit thicker. It could be thicker than that. Again, I'm not 100% sure, but definitely thickened it up more. And this is kind of a little bit, this is a blend of kind of the 50 and the other weight that I that came out of the shocks. So all I do uh, right now, there there's already bubbles that are coming up to the surface. And what you want to do is you kind of, you want to move that shaft, you know, just do it slowly, move it up. And even if, if, if you raise it, you don't want to raise it all the way to, well, you could raise it to the top as far as it'll go. But as long as it doesn't go over the line of your oil, because then you're just adding, you're going to have more bubbles in there. And you're going to get air in there. So you don't want that to happen. So you don't, you want to stay below the actual oil line that's there. And then you just kind of up and down as far as on the shaft, just to kind of make sure that oil gets to where it needs to get. 
and you don't create a lot of bubbles in there anyhow, but you just definitely want to make sure that you get oil where it needs to go. And it's going to make bubbles anyhow, but if you the slower you go, hopefully you don't get a lot of bubbles. Now, I got quite a few bubbles in there, and because it's thick, it's going to take a while. And it's been sitting for probably, I don't know, an hour or so anyway. Yep, and it's completely... There's no bubbles or anything like that. I, fortunately, because the way I have the camera, I can see if I can angle it down or whatever. Let's see. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just top it off just to get a little bit more oil in there. Let's see, where is this now that I move the camera? I'll just get it to the top. That way it's just there. Anyway, now that the camera's on a different angle, let's see if I can move that back. All right. So anyway, it's just about there. Again, I'm no shock expert. I just want to show you how to kind of assemble your shock, but then you guys, at your own discretion, how you're going to do everything else. But then I'll just go ahead and put that shock cap on. If you have it too much in there, you know, you're going to get it. It's going to overflow. So I just, and I get a little bit coming out there. It's a little, it should just have an air pocket in there. I'm gonna up and down on this, because it would really stink. Yeah, see how there's already oil? But that's what it should just kind of come back down, but I don't want oil constantly coming out of there. That What I'll go ahead and do now is, for this one, it's gonna be the same for everything else at this point in time, is to take apart your shock, kind of get that little that piece out of there. So let's go ahead. It does have a little ring around there anyway. Let's kind of keep that shock where it needs to be. And also, now as far as this part goes, I always just kind of grab that shock and I'll just put that piece in there. And then voila, shock's all ready together. Cool. So just three more to go. Um, I got to assemble the other one. I'm going to put it on to the BES-6. And yeah, hopefully I'll be able to run this thing here shortly so I can actually enjoy it. So anyway, I hope you guys found this helpful, or if anything. So until next time, this was Joe with OMGRC. You guys take care. I appreciate you guys watching. Also, go ahead and check us out over at uh, OMGRC. We have loads of RC cars, parts, batteries, whatever else. So definitely check us out. So we have payment plans as well. So definitely always kind of adding stuff. There's always new stuff coming out from our distributors as well. So until next time, guys, thank you for watching. Later.